Should you be looking to get out of your long positions at this point as the dead cap bounce over? And is the time now to be really looking to get short on the stock market, not looking to add more long positions? In this video, we're going to talk about what's going on with the broader indices. That's the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000. We're going to go look at the VIX and a couple other indicators. We're just going to really try to dissect and dig into what should we be expecting from this market what are the lines in the sand that says hey if the market crosses these thresholds we need to get out of the long setups that we're in and start looking to get short on this market now one thing you want to remember and i think a lot of people fail to remember this is that the market doesn't always just go up 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 and down 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 there's a lot of times where the market's just trading sideways and it feels like it's been like that for i would say about the past month where it's just been a sideways, sideways chop. And then you go back to like September and October when we were at the lows of the market, and there was a lot of chop there too. So when we want these drastic moves to higher and lower, what we really need to understand that many times the market's not just going way up or way down, it's going sideways and it can really test our patience, really drag us into positions we don't even want to be in or should be in. So keep that in mind when it comes to trading. Now, we're going to look at the S&P 500 right now. And remember, before you do that, make sure to check out the join button down below where you can get all my other stock market videos that I provide for members only each and every day, multiple videos each day sent out to them. So uh, if you like this video, definitely something worth trying out. Now, the S&P 500, this has been the constant theme for this index. And that is this declining trend line going all the way back to the all time highs. Now, Every one of these dead cat bounces has been stopped at the peak of this declining trend line. So again, what you saw here in March and then again here in August, guess what? We're right there again and here in November and early December, we're seeing that same rejection. So there's, there is this feeling out there that many are believing that, okay, this dead cat bounce is starting to run out of steam, but has it, is this the time now to where you say, I give up on all my long positions, I'm booking profits and I'm getting short on this market, or I'm just going straight to cash. Well, while that decline in trend line is very significant, probably the most significant thing that I'm looking at right now, there's also a short-term rising trend line as well that's worth remembering that it's out there and it hasn't broken it yet. In fact, it's tested it on multiple occasions. Again, you've got this rising trend line, one test, two tests, a third test right here, a fourth test, and now at the close of today, we're sitting on a fifth test of that declining trend line, okay? A lot of green circles there, I get it. But um, what you wanna remember though, is that we haven't broken that. So when we zoom in on it, what we really need to be aware of the fact is that we're testing it at this point in time, and we may get a bounce off of the short-term trend line and test once again, the declining trend line that goes back to the January highs. And if that's the case, it's too early to get into the short position. So you gotta hold off on that until you get a break of this rising trend line that goes back to the October lows. Once that happens, then yeah, I think I can get more bearish on this market. But right now we're stuck between the resistance overhead, the long-term resistance and the short-term support underneath. One of those have got to break. If it can break to the upside and break through that, then yeah, there's a good reason to go ahead and start adding more long positions for a swing trading standpoint. And then to the downside, if we break this rising support, then there's reason for me to start getting short on this market. But in the meantime, I got to sit there and I got to wait and I got to be patient. I, I've got long positions in the portfolio right now. I've been trimming a little bit off of it in the, in the past few days, but I fully expect in the next day or two, I could be completely cash or short on this market. So that's SPY. Now let's look at the Qs. The Qs, you've got this double bottom action here that's been going on. Really nice double bottom pattern. And then you got the breakout that took place that goes all the way back to October. Once it broke out back in mid-November, it just kind of traded sideways. Then we got that big pop off of the J Powell speech at the Brookings Institute, rallied pretty hard, but then the last couple of days it's been pulling back to this breakout level, which leaves us wondering, okay, what's going on here? Are we going to uh, just fall apart yet again? Well, w one area that I would start watching for is this rising trend line going all the way back to the early November time period. That's going to be key. You also have the declining trend line, but it's not as strong as the September one as the SPY one, because the SPY one has held it since the beginning of the year. This declining trend line has taken all shapes and forms. It used to be like that. And then it, and then it broke it in August. And so then the declining trend line 
had to take into account the peak from August. So there's not as many tests as what you have with the S&P 500. So this one doesn't hold as much weight for me that the SPY decline trend line has. But nonetheless, we could still see a bounce off of this rising trend line and then push higher. My feelings have been the past couple of days is that I'm getting uneasy in my long positions. I don't want to be in there, but the charts are not telling me to sell them. So I got to ignore the feelings and follow the charts. That's what I am as a swing trader. I'm going to follow the technicals, not feelings, not emotions. So I got to put those to the side and look at what the charts are telling me here. IWM. Now, this one's pretty interesting, too, because, again, you have the same kind of a declining trend line that, that the Qs have. And it broke through it after being rejected for a third time off, off of these November highs. And then it's come back and let's go ahead and get rid of this now and formed a double top on this chart. Now, not a lot of people are talking about it because it could also get kind of confused with the fact that we're trading sideways also during that same time period. But there's a good confirmation level here on IWM worth paying attention to. If IWM breaks below the lows from November 30th, that would be 180.79. Then you have a confirmed double top pattern right here, and it sets up for another test of this of the lows that go back to early November. And if those break, then we're looking at a retest of the October lows, which didn't really violate the June lows. So this support level going back to June, connecting the lows from September and October have been really key for, for the Russell 2000 and will be key going forward if this double top pattern confirms. Now, look at the VIX with me here because the VIX has been down two out of the last three days, despite the S&P 500 being down three days straight. It's also been down 10 out of the last 13 days. A lot of negativity on the VIX. It hasn't broken to the upside at all. You got a declining trend line. It needs to push through that declining trend line if a market sell-off is going to be able to take legs on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. It needs the participation typically of the volatility index. So you got the VIX. We've gone over the other three indices. Now, finally, the T2108. This one's pretty interesting as well. This measures the percentage of stocks trading above their 40-day moving average. A lot of consolidation, not a lot of improvement there. It's kind of peaked out right there at that 73.74 level. Had a pretty big dip today of 10%. If you start seeing a breakdown right here, that's going to probably mean that a lot of stocks are starting to break down individually on their own charts. And we're looking at a move maybe down below 50% in the short term. So what's the takeaway from all this? There's a lot going on. We have scenarios where, okay, be careful of the support underneath, be mindful of the resistance above, and be able to wait for the market to decide what direction it ultimately wants to take. What we think, what we feel, what we hope, what we want, what how we're positioned, doesn't matter to the market. And that's where a lot of people get themselves into trouble. They want to outthink the market, get a step ahead of the market. And sometimes the best thing to do, and actually the, the, the best thing for me to always do, is to wait for the market to show me the way. And right now we're trading a little bit sideways with support and resistance above and below the charts. And we got to wait for one of those to break. If it's to the downside, then we start getting short. If it's to the upside, then I can go ahead and get uh, more long than what I am right now. But right now, yes, I have some long positions, but I'm not married to them. I've been taking some off the table here, to capturing some of those profits. But if the market wants to start tanking again, I'm not holding on to them. I'm going to go ahead and get short. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and Again, make sure to click that join button down below so you can get more market videos like this each and every day. I provide these for the subscribers of this YouTube channel on a multi-time basis each day in, in this channel. So check that out. Let me know down in the comments below, what are you doing with the stock market here? Does this thing have you stressed out? Or are you just going to hope for that Santa rally to come along and uh, profit into your end? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys and God bless.